Okay, uh, good evening. My name is Gary Page and I'm a member of the design faculty and chair of the communications and events committee. Um, good to see the crowd. Um, before I introduce tonight's speakers, I have a couple of brief announcements. Uh, the first is that our final lecture for the spring semester will be next Wednesday, a week from today. Min Suk Cho of Mass Studies, uh, whose practice is based in Seoul, South Korea, will be speaking about recent work that the office is involved with. Um, I believe it's been about 10 years since he last spoke at USC, so I would urge you to attend uh, what I expect to be a provocative evening. Second, as we near the end of the semester, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge and thank Dean Curry for his leadership and support of the lecture series. I mean, I think we could just keep it One of the first initiatives Start he was to, make, uh, was to make it possible to significantly increase the number of lectures that the School of Architecture would host in the semester. Since then, we've doubled the number uh, of lectures and events from last year, from 9 to 18. Currently, there are 10 lectures uh, and a film screening <coughs> planned for the fall 2018 semester. Additionally, Dean Curry Sturt stated that beginning this coming fall, we would expand the program to include a symposium each semester, along with the exhibitions, along with exhibitions and other events. So I'd like to thank the Dean, the Communications and Events Committee, along with faculty and staff members that have worked to realize this in particular, Jane Ilger, Amy Murphy, Elizabeth Hell, Elvin Wong, Aaron Cuevas, and all of the others that have had a hand in implementing these events. Thank you. This evening, I have the pleasure of welcoming to USC Benjamin Ball and Gaston Nogas. It was 10 or so years ago that I stood in a similar spot, introducing them for a lecture that they gave at Sire, uh, a few years after they had formed Ball Nogas Studio. Rightly so, I guess, I first met them when they were students at Sire. Since then, I've gotten to know both of them in different ways, and have closely observed and admired the evolution of their work and the practice. In that decade, Ball Noga Studio has established themselves through a substantial body of work that, as they describe it, operates in the territory between architecture, art, and industrial design. As importantly, in my opinion, they've been pioneers and innovators of sorts, using the work instrumentally to explore both critically and creatively the various points of contact between analog and digital fabrication. However, while many others have talked about and theorized the topic, Benjamin and Gaston were working quietly in their studio, experimenting with materials and techniques making stuff and creating sublime objects and environments. Part of this, I'm pretty sure, is due to their unique backgrounds, which, frankly, might not be so different from many of your own. Benjamin made his, made his way to Los Angeles by way of Iowa, Colorado, where his mother's involvement in theater proved to be uh, influential. Gaston moved to Los Angeles from Buenos Aires with his family when he was 12, frequently accompanying his father to his job as an aerospace engineer. This is where he acquired his fascination uh, with making things with his hands. As I mentioned, the two of them met at SIAR, and after graduating, uh, did some stints at Gary Partners. Their first project, uh, Maximilian's Shell, for the Materials and Applications Exhibition Space Signal, what was not only to become characteristic of their approach to working, but also one of the things that makes their work unique and exceptional. That is, their ability to design the mechanism of production for each project. They stated unabashedly that the work is informed by craft. Let me offer an example. Uh, this is a description of the process of making pulp pavilion a temporary structure for the 2015 Coachella Music and Arts Festival. They write, 
We designed a production process where a blend of pulp, water, and pigment was sprayed onto a three-dimensionally woven lattice of natural growth, hardening into a rigid, self-supporting matrix that is much lighter than materials of comparable strength. We employed no additional materials except for the minimal tree-to-tree -tree connections and seating. The paper we used in the pavilion was diverted from a waste stream that is cheaply available almost anywhere in the world. Unlike fiberglass or carbon fiber composites that are polymer-based, the pavilion contained no toxic materials. It could be recycled or composted after the two-week run of the festival. Yet, clearly, at the same time, the work is not just about materials and techniques, but also intended to provoke and engage the senses, invite physical interaction, and quite often create an immersive environment that transcends its own objecthood in favor of individual and collective social and aesthetic experience. Perhaps it's the convergence and resonance between these qualities that makes the work so compelling. The Mexican poet Octavio Paz wrote an influential essay on the relationship between art, industry, and craftsmanship. In modern art, and I mean post-industrial works of art, meaning dissipates in the radiation of being. The act of seeing is transformed into an intellectual operation that is also a magical right. To see is to understand, and to understand is to commune. Please welcome to USC, Benjamin Ball. Thanks, Gary. That was really <laughs> well thought through. And uh, Octavia Paz, too. Yeah, yeah so. flattering. <laughs> nice piece uh, to begin with. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the format, right? Yeah, and I think what we want to give you guys a, a kind of a glimpse into what we're, we're going to do and how we're going to do it, because I think it, it, it kind of gets at how we get at projects and how we, how we get to where we get to and the things we're going to show you. So Yeah. We, we kind of um, uh, shunned the typical uh, lecture format. Um, I think I've given two lectures in this, three lectures in this space in the last like three years. So I thought we might, since both Gaston and I would be here, we would, yeah. we would conduct this a little bit more like a conversation. And we would structure the talk uh, according to milestones, uh, 10, 20, 30, 45 minutes. 50-minute milestones, and we, we've got to hit these milestones. Because we can be long-winded. We can be long-winded. And so that sort of puts a set of rules on uh, the process. And um, <clears throat> But between, between, <clears throat> between those milestones, it's a freewheeling uh, conversation. We don't have a particular uh, format. And you'll have to forgive me because i got a bit of a sore throat. Um, so without, without further ado, let's go. Um, Start. Here we go. To the studio. Talk to him about that's, the studio. That's where, you know, this is, uh, for, for us, being uh, in, in the environment of making is very important. Uh, that, kind of, that kind of communication between what you can think about up, you know, upstairs with a computer, like what you're seeing here on the screen, and then uh, the connection to what you're making downstairs in the, in the shop, and the kind of dialogue that, the, in the back and forth that you get between uh, those two different kinds of uh, modes of thinking. And for us, that, that kind of connection, that immediate connection is important for lots of reasons, you know. Not the least of which is the sort of power it gives you as a, to own a production right. method, um, which is something that I always felt um, when I was... Uh, when I was younger, that um, I had a lot of ideas and I didn't have a lot of uh, resources to make them, especially if they weren't um, if they weren't uh, tailored specifically to the marketplace, right. um, which um, a lot of the things I was interested in were not. Right. Um, so this kind of tink uh, yeah, tinkering, and, tinkering, and 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 and, and, and learning from, by doing. So that's that's something that. 
you know, you can see in these images here, uh, something that, 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 you know, we, we kind of employ in the studio a lot. We just, we play, it's kind of, you, you mess around with material and you, and you try to interrogate it, try to understand what you can do with it. Um, so this, this kind of idea of like beginning with, uh, with, with this kind of playing with material and process is, is, is also I mean, a big part of how we are and what drives the studio and a lot of the projects. And, but yeah, it begins with a hunch. It doesn't really begin with a <clears throat> necessarily a manifesto or some kind of um, ultimate purpose in mind. And I think that that's, um, that's <clears throat> one of the things that makes it really hard, but it is also is what makes it, um, uh, it's open-ended in uh, we can, uh, uh, we can test uh, ideas and then search for meaning relative to uh, the built environment or uh, the built environment to making an object. Um, so we don't necessarily begin these kinds of endeavors with a product or a project in mind. The project is mastery of the production method or the production scheme, I suppose you could call it, itself. <laughs> comes out of a, I mean, it comes out of that. It also comes out of sometimes. Well, we're going to talk about the two ways in which we begin projects here. We we start with uh, the process. So these are, I mean, these have been happening over the years. Some of these are related to projects. Some of them are related to, um, again, a hunch. And um, this one, for example, is um, part of the research that's going into. Uh, producing um, the first bonded fiberglass branching rod structure, I think. Composite, yeah. I mean, composite. Um, there's really no, we didn't really have a playbook to uh, work with. We got a lot of advice from some, actually some people in this room. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. And uh, Bill Chrysler, but um, Bill's, uh, Chrysler Associates, but Bill's, uh, Bill's yeah. remarks were always something to the effect of, um, yeah, it seems good to me. I've never seen this before. So, um, Composites are tricky, so uh, we can, we'll get into that. This, so, they're tricky. They start on fire. Um, You've got to convince people about it, you know. So there's not a whole lot of history with this stuff yet, but yeah. Consequently, so, there's a lot of risk involved. So these are bending uh, experiments and so forth. So a lot, of the, a lot of the testing, a lot of the tinkering right. in the studio – um, the practice, as Gary said, began with this project in 2005, yeah. um, while we were both moonlighting. Well, actually, we, we had real jobs then. We, we were moonlighting. Different jobs. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't really a job at that point. It was a, it was a fascination or a, yeah. a mission, um, a project called Maximilian Shell. And it, uh, it, I mean, this was, it may not look particularly... Um, difficult to produce at this point, given the, where software is. But at the time, there was no software platform that could automate this kind of um, computation. We had to adapt mechanical engineering software, and we had to seek out, um, you know, kind of borrow from other industries uh, the fabrication techniques and f find ways to do it uh, that were affordable. I mean, this project was built for maybe five thousand dollars. It, it's. I mean, it, so so we materials. have. Yeah, you know, we put it up here because this is this, this project kind of has defined the way that we've worked on pretty much every single project that we've ever done together. So um, you know, the ideas that this kind of put forth uh, have have always uh, we we've always kind of kind of followed them. So right. I mean, that's. That's that's the reason why this this thing is up here, and, it, and it's and it's something that that it was a uh, it, it 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 incorporated everything like both the ma like material and material that's not necessarily our architectural material, software that wasn't necessarily uh, like software that 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 um, you know people were using to build these these large things, and then and then also like kind of one of the first instances in which kind of people started to. Uh, to kind of think about this kind of part to whole relationship and parametric modeling and all of that stuff. So using these kinds of tools and 
in, in kind of a pretty innovative way. And, and also, I think in a way that like, so all of our projects have, are always pretty honest in the sense that what you see is, 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 is also structured. It's, 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 it's the engineering. So it's not hidden, you know, behind something that's pretty to look at. Um, you know, so the so it, the structure is also beautiful. So we they're on, they have an honesty in that sense, and I think all of our projects we strive for that that kind of idea. Plus, it's also kind of why why do you want to bury you know a bunch of money in a foundation? Well, we, yeah, I mean we've always had this idea about putting everything all the money up on the screen, right? I mean, I <laughs> yeah, used to be an art director and set designer, and there was that's a kind of credo in the in the business in the film business, but um, we. I guess we're modernists in that sense. We like okay. we like the honesty of it. I, I believe in some. I have this belief in honesty. Although some of these projects, you'll start to see, there's more use of metaphor. There's more use of yeah. um, um, artifice in some of the later uh, the later works. Um, but picking up on what Gaston was saying about this defining or codifying our pro- working methods, <clears throat> it, um, it it did, and it, what we realized was. <clears throat> that the ideas about and, and the ownership of the production scheme, the mastery or the, 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 the facility with the production scheme um, enabled us to, uh, uh, to use the projects as stepping stones and yeah. to build uh, on the knowledge and to attract greater and greater budgets and greater and greater confidence. And um, so we could continue to kind of apply the thinking yep. and, and methodologies uh, to bigger and bigger uh, uh, venues. So PS1, um, I didn't think it was as good as Maximilian Shell, but um, the same bigger kind of Maximilian Shell on steroids has to, has to resist gale forced winds, codes, and so forth. And um, uh, that was in 2007. We about after around that time we started thinking about well how do we really kind of theorize this so what are we actually up to? Um, one of the things that kept coming back to us was that we were we were designing projects the PS One Liquid Sky project Maximus Million Shell but what we were really perfecting or designing was uh, a production scheme. We're designing production. We're designing ways of, of, of making things and refining it in terms of logistics, in terms of uh, finance, um, in terms of computation, um, uh, human uh, social capital, etc. So um, we, and, and, it, and it, I think that there's some relation in what we're doing to the past in that it's there's a lot of relation uh burleski's dome uh uh you know he he was he 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 was given the the commission to do this um not because he was recognized at the time as an architect but more because he was recognized as being a maker of machines and he was the guy who could solve how to use it's a reverse the, the, horse, the horse went one one direction but it could go up and down so, right so he could so bring you, know, you don't have to flip a horse around because they don't turn around that easy basically he could figure he figured out like he figured out how to bring bricks yeah. and stone up, up, right. up yeah. several hundred feet and um, that is what one of the things that really enabled him to execute that project. And when he died, he was buried there. And uh, on his tomb, it says, it does not say architect, does not say architect or artist, it does not say um, sculptor, it says a maker of machines. Um, So we're thinking about these, we're going to, in this talk, we're going to talk about some, uh, sometimes we're going to talk about means, and sometimes we're going to talk about ends. some projects, as I've said, as, we, as we've said, are kind of uh, driven by uh, uh, the development of means uh, and it means in search of an end, and that becomes an end in itself. Uh, but then there's also a series of projects that you'll see that are uh, that come uh, as a result of a of a concept, a kind of uh, um, predetermined idea about what. 
uh, a project could be, what it could mean, what it could, what it could deliver metaphorically, uh, experientially, and we sort of then try to find a production method that will work for that. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of talk about yeah. projects in both beginning uh, and beginning and dip, in different in different in different sides of that different sides of that those those sentences. And I mean, we'd, what we'd really like too is that kind of the kind of. Uh, duality that those words have, and, and how they can it can be kind of muddy to like that the understanding of, of both of those words and their relationship because it's not super clear cut and straightforward every time that we do this. Even even when even when we're working on a, on a on a or beginning with a pro with a pro, in a project that's kind of process driven. So, um, so the the first example of this kind of design of production, we're gonna walk you through several projects that really constitute one kind of meta project. That's how we think of it. The project is the catenary the, uh, and the catenary as a, a variable um, module uh, and what that could mean in terms of uh, making yeah. environments. Um, and uh, we, oh, I didn't get a better slide, but this it came about. It, these came from uh, uh, Fry Auto uh, uh, form finding experiments. You would use these as um, right. you know, kind of analog computers. It's a very for, early computer. Yeah, right? for, for for making yeah. uh, thin shell concrete yeah. structures. But we we were attracted to the one on the left because we were like, well, what if you expanded that in three dimensions across a space? You could you could begin to form this kind of thick thick space, this Four kind seasons. of thickened air that that yeah. that would be this kind of gassy kind of poche and um, we also looked at the we were also kind of simultaneously I was in New York having a drink at the Four Seasons which unfortunately isn't there anymore and um, if anybody everybody some people in this room will have know will know the Cantonary curtains uh, that uh, Philip Johnson them, yeah. and his interior designer developed and the air blows up in them um, so that was where we started um, and we we embarked on this series of projects called Suspensions. And, and there was a reason why we started there, too. I mean, that first, this first project right here, the budget was, what, $2,000? $2,000, And right. it hadn't, but, you know, we had to buy our air, airline tickets to Chicago with that also. So, you know, you, you have to, you, have to you, you get these opportunities, right? And think of it all as an opportunity. So, but that's the opportunity that we had. And, 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 and so, and we were interested in this kind of parametric kind of way of approaching projects. So you got that much money and, you know, you got to make something. How do you, how do you approach that parametric, like thinking about something parametrically? So the string, this the idea of the line, that's the yeah. variable reduce, part. If, yeah, like a kind of a one-dimensional, yeah. um, <laughs> or two, it's almost one-dimensional kind of <laughs> part that, that it really only has one, it has one dimension to it. The length. And, and then it has, a, it has a, a, a two hang points, two locations. So break that problem down to something as, as simple as possible, which wasn't simple at the time to, to do this. Again, like adapting software uh, to make it, um, to make it, uh, uh, enable it to study parametric variability. I'm starting to hate the word parametricism. Sure. Right? I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an old word. It's, it's an old been word. around for a while. But we, we talked to him about this. Yeah. I mean, this... I mean, okay, so you know, you got to make the thing. So, and and, and uh, so we set it up basically as as a as a way of. So, you know, we have this computer, this computer model, this information in the computer. So you have to get that information out of out of the computer, and basically, uh, we set up a pro a process in which um, we kind of or we we orchestrated uh, uh, the the labor, the hand labor, into this kind of, as a as a machine by uh, by using just a little. Bits of information, key bits of information from from the computer. In this case, a cut list and uh, a cut list of two different materials in length, right? And these 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 uh, parts that you see here uh, were all cut by hand like this. So um, you know, it's a it's a it's a, it's adapting a, a hand process. Uh, okay, next one, yeah, and uh, and then uh, you know, like some of the images here, like that kind of space that it created, and. Uh, the kind of relationship of all of the parts to each other, uh, kind of creating this this space from kind of front to back, um, and and how I mean this is how we kind of conceptualize it and how yeah, we, we think a, about it. We have a name. So 
Um, About you know, that time when we were starting to get a lot of uh, in, invitations to do talks at universities, we had to name things. <laughs> so um, well, let's call it suspensions. I mean, you know, so the suspensions, what the word comes from, from both, from, from, I mean, it's from what it is, but also, I mean, it's, we're hanging this material in space, you know, but it also talks about it in, in the kind of more scientific term of, um, of kind of a material surrounded by, uh, by a void or, or another material, a material in suspension with another, in, a, in another material. So in, in how, in thinking about it like that. And, and, you know, I think that like those, that, that, that kind of, uh, idea that kind of process in, in thinking about string kind of led us to in, in having done the, the the kind of analog hand building we started to think about well how can we streamline this process can we make this faster can we speed it up somehow using the computer so we started to um we're using a machine that was machine, driven by a computer yeah. we're using so, a computer but yeah using a, using the computer but using uh, well the computer for information so we started using the computer uh, we, we thought of a way in which we could use the computer to actually actuate uh, a set of uh, 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 I don't know uh, objects that could then uh, print on string so we started to think about uh, develop that we developed this machine but which called the installator and what it basically did is allowed us to uh, kind of expand on what we could do with the kind of intricacy of the material. So this, this, what this machine does is it basically takes a string and uh, you plug a com the computer up to it, and it, it behaves very much like a printer, except that it prints on a, on a piece of string. And because it can print and it, uh, and it follows just information from the computer, it can do it infinitely much faster than you could by hand. So making this thing basically opened up this whole range of possibilities and ideas and how we could think about material, color, space, um, this, the kind of, this kind of immateriality of like this material in space floating about, changing uh, kind of color and all well, that. Well, color, so. color starts becoming a, a, a three-dimensional, um, um, you can start to create a three-dimensional geometry of color and color starts to work across these suspensions um, yeah. in as a as a shape or as a space in itself and um, yeah. because you I mean, you're managing a mind-numbing amount of information with each of these little segments different different color um, it, it, it comes calls uh, yeah. ECOT comes to mind um, the process by which uh, it's kind of a uh, Central Asian. It developed in a lot of different cultures simultaneously, but it's a textile manufacturing production technique that involves dyeing individual uh, um, yarns of uh, in the loom, uh, marking them off, uh, uh, putting resistance around them, wrapping them, and then taking them out and dyeing them, putting them back in the loom, and then weaving them together. It's incredibly time consuming and you, but you but you want, you end up with as a kind of 8 bit uh, aesthetic um, <laughs> um, it, 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 it's funny cuz these these took an entire village an entire culture to produce an ecot that's why they're so coveted uh, today and this blurry have, images basically right but that's essentially the kind of language of of form that we we found that these pieces uh, could create um, and the, we really pushed hard to do this one in 2009. Brooke Hodge um, offered us um, a, a show at the um, at the Mocha PDC um, on on uh, technology and craft, and um, we produced this project called Feathered Edge. Um, I think appropriately, uh, the name was kind of appropriate, um, but this kind of give you a sense of the. Uh, the, the way the color becomes a kind of form, uh, yeah. color in these pieces can uh, have uh, a kind of soft presence, but it can also um, snap into very sharp, sharp edges. Yeah. Okay. And or that was at least the kind of uh, yeah. the kind of um, experience that we were kind of aiming yeah. to to create. Doesn't want to keep going. Um, that's all right. That's enough. Yeah. Yeah. So we 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 were also uh, 
Well, it's a temporary project. It's a temporary project. We took this idea further and, uh, for a commission that we got at um, Los Angeles International Airport. If you've flown out of Bradley West Terminal, it's a Kurt Ventress project uh, finished in 2000, 2013. Um, we were commissioned uh, to do this piece that we called Air Garden. Um, uh, we had never worked in an airport before. It was an interesting thing to consider. Yeah. Um, given the uh, level of surveillance and uh, control that is exerted on you as a uh, traveler, and we started con trying to conceptualize, well, what could a piece really, a, a kind yeah. of an artwork oh. that had, I mean, there's, there's a substantial money for a, an artwork. Uh, it's a substantial amount of space that this piece was going to occupy. We were given a huge light well, about 80 feet by 30 feet by 100 feet tall. Um, so it's really, you know, you're making an artwork that is at a architectural scale. It's almost a piece of architecture. It's integrated with the architecture. And so what could that deliver? Uh, we thought about the airport as a city yeah. the, uh, and uh, part of a network of cities that spans the globe, uh, a city that you are potentially could be a kind of prisoner within and never leave. And uh, what would be the garden or what would be the park within that kind of space, a place where you could rest your mind uh, for, you know, momentarily, take your mind away from travel, uh, create the kind of central, uh, kind of carve out a space of, of contemplation within this, uh, this cacophony of, uh, of, of surveillance and, 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 and control. Mark Bradford did a piece. Uh, right over the TSA checkpoint, pay, uh, but his piece is sort of at this transition point. Yeah. Pay White did a piece in what's called the sterile quarters, which is very much a move, space of movement. Right. Um, this is our space, um, uh, pretty blank, uh, uh, empty, uh, not much happening, waiting for something to uh, fill it, uh, do something to it, activate it. Uh, millions of people pass through this every year month. It's a huge uh, space too. There's gives you a sense of the scale. There's an escalator there. And this is this there's a we we imagined about four hundred and fifty thousand feet would be needed to create the kind of proper presence, studying what 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 kind of density this needed. Yeah. And um four hundred and fifty thousand feet is ninety miles of chain. Um with something like 120,000 individual parts, each different, each it's different. a lot of bits. Each, yeah. It's a different yeah. spatial location. Yeah. So we, talk, talk about the installator. Well, I mean, you know, so, okay, so we, you, gotta, you gotta make that. Um, so, you know, how do you basically go about managing that kind of information? So, uh, and, and the, the funny part is, is that, like, I mean, I think that, you know, what the, the image that you're looking at here, this, this slide and, and, and one that we had previously of the one in Chicago, I mean, both, both things are very similar in, in the process way and, and the way that, the way that you, you think about it, except that one uses a compute, uh, basically something that's more computer driven rather than, than kind of list driven. So, um, you know, you know, it's uh, what, what I think like all of these kind of iterations and all of these different uh, catenary projects that we've done, both both uh, uh, permanent ones and, and and also temporary ones, because you know, like thinking about about it, like in a uh, in a permanent material in that in that kind of environment, uh, how that you know forces you to kind of approach material differently. So we could no longer make it out of string. So. Um, and, and we could, so we couldn't use a lot of the, a lot of that, this kind of materials of production. We could use the, the, the materials of the, like the computation and, 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 and the thinking and all of that, but, but not really the, the printing on string. It's just not permanent enough. So, um, you know, that the, to, to manufacture these, the, the kind of process became something that was a, a bit of a mixture between the, the kind of the string printing machine, the installator, and also the, the kind of, the hand uh, analog kind of method of cutting. Yeah, the, uh, the, machine, the machine becomes like the con or yeah. orchestral conductor. It's a but, conductor. But, so you can, it, but it was kind of amazing the way that we, 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 we got it to output information that yeah. somebody 
who, I mean, the, the test was, well, if somebody who was stoned could operate this and, and not make a mistake, because the, the, the check system is, if, is... You absolutely can. It's is efficient great. enough, then it, we're, we're, we're doing all right. Because you, you've, got, you've got like a dozen people working on this project for the, a period of three months, um, cutting chain, hundreds of thousands of pieces. Each one's different. Each one's kind of spatially lo- located. And one, you're going to notice one mistake. And they actually Mistakes cut, stand out. Like they crazy. cut all these pieces under the direction of the machine, and they made like 10 mistakes. Six, 10 mistakes, yeah. So, so also, you know, that's kind of, so like, you know, leading to this image. So, you know, you're working at the, you're working in an airport, Customs and Border Patrol, you know. So it's, 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 uh, it's a different way, it's a different place to work, it, to work in. So you have to, you can't, you know, you don't have unlimited time. You know, you have to be there X amount of hours at night. So the, 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 the method of installing it also became kind of, part of the consideration and in, 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 in how we designed this thing. So, and, and, and approach the, the kind of installation of it. So how much it weighed, where the points were, a lot of those things were, were driven by uh, the, the method of production. So, so the, the, but, you know, aesthetically, kind of architecturally, what, what is it, what do these lines mean? What do these colors mean? It's, it's, it's organized on with only four colors. Um, Cyan, magenta, in yellow, in yellow, and clear, which uh, will, uh, in uh, visual proximity to one another, will start to blend and create um, first-order derivatives. So, cyan and uh, and uh, yellow yeah. make uh, is that purple, yeah. um, orange color optically or yellow and uh, yeah. optically blending, and. So that was a, an, an interest. So that as one moved through the space, this is, you can see this is a very um, active space, and there's a lot of different viewing areas, and each of those areas is sort of controlled and separated from the others. Um, you, you, you're not able to move, you know, freely between these these spaces. Um, let me go back and go do it again. Um, so. We wanted the piece to deliver a kind of different look, uh, depending upon where one was in the building, yeah. and as one moved through it, time of day, time of day, yeah. whether they were coming or going, and um, so w- w- the lines on the piece, the stripes, we 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 st- we started thinking about how the light changed throughout the day. We mapped uh, the shadows of. Uh, the skylight onto the array of, of catenaries yep. at the vernal equinox and the summer solstice. That's the name, Air Garden. Um, and uh, so there's, in theory, there's a time of the year when those blue uh, uh, stripes would perfectly align with the shadows Lines up, yep. in the space. Um, so we've, since this time, we've Taken the production and tried to uh, try to expand it, explore different uses of this this vocabulary, and also tried to monetize it. You know, kind of amortize the costs of this I'm stuff. Some of the other things. Um, right. This is a piece that we call light column, using a lot. Uh, uh, right. Smaller catenaries in was in France, right. and also thinking about like how I mean developing the 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 the, the, the technique the the craft of making these kinds of these kinds of uh, 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 installations that use this kind of material and, and that the approach to uh, to to kind of uh, color in space. Sometimes exploring representational imagery. Right. This case is an abstraction of a of a, um, a baroque dome. Um, that was printed onto the onto the string. Um, also looks like a brain scan MRI. Um, st- studying uh, formal uh, varieties, the kind of formal uh, moves that we can make using chain. Um, in this case, kind of spiral with a piece called Euphony in Nashville. Um, similar. Here's a similar kind of topology as the. Um, uh, uh, LAX project, which was actually a prototype for the LAX project, but um, uh, it's a piece in um, in uh, Portland. 
So we're supposed to be at 20 minutes. I don't know. We're probably at <laughs> Well, you know, you go over budget sometimes. So, um, um, so but yeah. That, that, spawned, that spawned a whole, a whole type of thinking that we yeah. think of as kind of feathering the edge, right. fe- fe- softening the, the edge that we experience, that we see in the built environment. Right. It's not something that comes easy for architecture. Uh, architecture likes solidity it likes edges it likes uh, clear planes um, and we were we were commissioned to do a project in West Hollywood that um, uh, was on a corner and we were attracted to this idea that uh, if we could ex- if we could extract the metaphysical presence of uh, a re- the religious icon sans religious icon um, and then try to make that metaphysical presence um, um, using only mirrors, so these are kind of combed like mirrors, uh, to kind of uh, to kind of uh, uh, highlight and uh, uh, elevate yeah. uh, the banal uh, yeah. corner uh, of this building. This is um, one of my favorite projects ever, actually. On the corner so, of um, La Brea yeah. and Santa Monica Boulevards, you yeah. know. I mean, it's it's they, you know they kept, they kept the, the the corner was kept being referred to as a gateway this this kind of this kind of a uh, uh, you know this grandiose this kind of path into into West Hollywood and and you know we were like you know, looking at the corner yeah, so, 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 the, yeah, the way like, that the architects yeah. also talked about this building they yeah. they kind of talked about the this this the, this kind of poke out thing it was like this figure and they were like really interested in it and so we started seeing it as this kind of body in there and like. Right. Then you know. So I mean, it's good of, too because I mean, West Hollywood has this share of crackpot kind so, of um, spiritualism. So we thought. I mean, we also like that. I, that, that, I mean, it's, it's a little bit like it's a little punk rock. To, I mean, that was the idea. That image was the the image that we really, you know, used to like kind of develop and drive this project. The, so, the Virgin of Guadalupe. Yeah. Truly, I mean, I mean that's not bullshit that we made. We, it it's not after the. It didn't come after the fact. We we're like, it's got to be like this. I mean, yeah. look at this. Would be so incredible to like. You come up and 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 you 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 get this kind of it's you know it's also Los Angeles you know so Los Angeles you know it's in Spanish Next. so <laughs> uh, it's all order though make a gateway to West Hollywood yeah. it's like yeah thanks t- for two hundred and eighty thousand dollars where it's not a lot of a lot of resources um, this project did a VA, VA uh, hospital in Palo Alto uh, called the apparent junction between Earth and Sky. We started working with trying to soften. We've been at, we asked to do a mural. Like, why are you asking people, the architects, to do a mural? Um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll accept the challenge. So our, we wanted to spatialize it. We yeah. wanted to, to Beyond break, the down that, break down that break down the kind of surface yeah. of, of the wall. And our approach to doing that was very uh, 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 material uh, driven. It's a, it's a kind of a, a gizmo. Kind of facade technique which I mean, that we developed. It's also an architectural system. Right. So it, it's a tell them. Tell them so quickly. basically, uh, so you, what you're looking at is uh, it's an image that's made entirely by reflected light. So and you know, on the, on the left, you you, you see what uh, the, the kind of system is, and on the right, you see how it kind of works. But it's it's it's, it's this idea about kind of like you're saying, kind of breaking down the this kind of plane of the wall, this the surface, and and going beyond it. And in this case. Um, you know the title, the the purpose of the building is it's a it's a it's an aquatic center. The this this uh, this kind of junction between you know water and and, and, and sky air. So it's you know, people in the water. So we were interested in those ideas. Also the kind of the kind of horizon between uh, both kind of mediums, air and water. Um, and and this kind of process uh, or this this technique kind of works in that way has that kind of horizon because you're looking you're looking at all of these kind of fins that are oriented this way so you can see the tops of some and the, and, and a lot of it you see this reflection so it's this there's this there's this there's always this horizon line so some more kind of less uh, conceptually driven project but kind of making a kind of ghost canopy of right. a building in WeHo just using a matrix thinking about material and kind of making our own developing our own kind of material in a way this is kind of this kind of porous solid so the feathered edge uh, techniques started to influence our thinking about kind of 
conceptually about yeah. our, our aesthetics. And um, we also at that time started thinking more kind of top down about projects. Um, <laughs> how could we? This is a ballpark in El Paso. Let's cruise through this. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. This is a ballpark <laughs> in El Paso um, that uh, we we it separates uh, there's a wall that separates the the, pe- the artwork is a wall that separates the ballpark from a, the m- most busy public street in uh, uh, El Paso and so we wanted it to have this uh, to be a kind of uh, a knothole fence uh, you know the the everybody's seen the image of kids looking through a knothole fence looking at a ball game on the other side so uh, this is a kind of pub- public knotholes um Here's the there's an image of it, and uh, so how how are we going to make that? We 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 conceived of that idea yeah. that metaphor, without any idea about materiality and, right. or or about or about how it was going to be made. So it's this is you know the ends talking, um, but we we came across uh, these um, um, heat sinks and. Gas and it's like let's let's mill the back of them. Yeah, we started thinking about it. so so you know we wanted to kind of create this wood texture, this pattern, and so we kind of hit on the idea that we uh, we, we basically carved the back of this these kind of fin these fins we can let light pass through it and cast shadows and and, and light onto the surface of those fins and and we can we can make it we can both at the same time make an image but also make it more translucent. So we were interested in being able to see through, you know, this kind of like we, we wanted to kind of because of what it was, we wanted people to, to feel like the, 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 the need to kind of come up to, to the wall and, and peek through it and, 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 and go to the concept even without knowing it. Yeah, it. At the same time, it had to function as a security fence and as a uh, as a um, uh, head resist, you know, gale force winds. And so it, we had to like make custom extrusions to do this. And so. Yeah, these are like art only in name, really, right? Yeah. Like this is like architectural thinking that you have to apply to these kinds of projects. It's also in El Paso. There's a border fence, you know. It's yeah, so kind of line. It's got so. the same. It's got the it's same. Of, it, it, the, the, the the border fence um, um, color soon to be removed. By the way, they're going to be building something. that's called the wall. Um, if you guys haven't heard. Um, but they're, they're down there, it's actually made of these of these channels. So this is yeah. it's only a quarter mile away. So we wanted to riff on that. We wanted to also talk about transparency across bound borders, um, which this does. So you can look and you can steal a look at the game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So talk about this. So you know. Uh, so we. <laughs> so. Uh, so secondhand geology. So, uh, uh, so a lot of times, so uh, so there's a, the process will 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 kind of uh, drive the the the, the kind of uh, approach and the thinking, but a lot of times, um, the the you know the the kind of connection to this is another one of my favorite projects for lots of reasons. I mean, I think that it's I, I'm I'm interested in the context of where it was. It's in a school of geology in Central Washington University. Um, then it's uh, interesting, also formally speaking to me. I like I like the I like the form because it's it's an obelisk, you know, and it's it's. Well, I haven't seen it yet, though. Oh, okay, <laughs> well, we'll talk about it. So we'll go we'll move through the obelisk. All right, <laughs> slide well, we'll, move we'll, 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 we can just say like what well, we we yeah. got we got in we got into uh, making our own material, right. and we we got into kind of we, we were challenged with by these geologists. Uh, to work the geology into your con- your thinking, into your concept. concept. Like, okay, well, what, I don't know what that means, but let's let's think about the the enormous amount right. of force that that the that, that geological, on, geological yeah. forces uh, exerting on rock, or, right. and, and 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 kind of mimic that in our own materials. In this case, stainless steel. And so we we cherry pick stainless steel and crushed these bales and then started to cut through it um, uh, and uh, with this big bandsaw yeah. to, to expose we first, the... We first, we first did these wall pieces that, that, that really kind of explored the, that explored the aesthetics of it. Like, what, what does a slice look like? What does an edge look like? What does it mean to, to yeah. file it and to finish it? And to, um, 
I mean, it, 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 be, it started to, like, you took this, this scrap material that had no um, order, and by pressing it and compressing it into these blocks, we, we actually made it behave and move very much like strata interacts with itself and moves in this kind of over, over time in a very, very kind of slow way. And then when you cut through it, you, we exposed it. So it, the material had this kind of relevance to to where it was and 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 into into the school and and also the form had a lot of relevance in that sense so and also the title you know second hand geology so but didn't have a lot of relevance is what happens sometime and yeah sometimes this is this is one of the risks so when, you, you when you're when you're inventing material sometimes you'll run some risks so yeah. um you know one of them was that um it's tough to tell what 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 it's gonna do especially something that that you just squeeze together and it's, it's tough for licensed engineers to tell yeah. what it's going to do so, so they you know they're on this adventure with us too and you've got to take our work i guess involves i guess i know it involves taking a lot of financial risk some risk yeah so this was we eventually got it straight <laughs> stiffened it up um it yeah. did a little retrofitting learning on the job um uh and it came out amazing actually. yeah the piece this project is is on the, the campus is on an axis. Yeah, it's on it's on the axis. So it could, just needs to be an obelisk. But you know, you look at that material, and it's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, uh, it 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 transcends what it is. Yeah, that was you know. Okay. <clears throat> when we want me to start this. Well, thinking about so thinking about material and the the the. the form of well the material of creating what we use for creating and i mean this is a project uh, that we did for uh uh, uh shenzhen biennale we called it built to wear basically so um I, I mean this this kind of project kind of began with this idea of uh, kind of material the flow of goods and the flow of material um basically across the world so this is in you know, built out of entirely out of garments that were you know built or built here. I guess you'd say at American Apparel at the time, which had a completely different approach to the way that they you know treat their workers and and uh, and um, so we had the the opportunity to basically uh, kind of create this project using uh, that some some excess material that they had left left over. So we. Uh, kind of brought it uh, and used it for, to create this, but but it's I think it's a project that kind of touches on the on the idea of 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 of, of kind of a set, the second life of something, or or a, 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 this kind of a manufact cross manufacturing. Yeah, that was, that was the title that we used used for the so. process is cross manufacturing. Thinking about a component as having a a, a designated second life, uh, but performing. As a component right. in a in an architectural or environmental assembly, um, I mean, this was happening. By the way, it's probably important to contextualize. It was happening during like kind of pavilion mania within the design uh, culture, and right. I, we didn't. We wanted to. We wanted to try to. When we were getting asked to do a lot of these, and so we wanted to comment on the. Uh, right. Life the, the life cycle of those types of projects and, and, and think about how a project with a limited life cycle could be used as a uh, as a kind of case study in how to reuse materials because in if it's less than if it's going to live for less than a year you can kind of see the, the process of its development um, the process of making it its life, its first life, and then its process of demand, dismantling it in the second life. That's kind of apparent to to any anybody um, who's design of disappearance. Who's, is what we call so, it. We, so we started thinking about designing disappearance, right? And that carried into this one yeah. um, at UCLA. Maybe some of you might have seen it, but this was uh, was uh, at the Herb Alpert School of Music called Tablecloth. Uh, it was meant to be a performance space as well as a, an acoustical dampening device, yeah. uh, diffusing device, uh, reconfigurable performance space. But its uh, second life, uh, it was constructed entirely of 300 and some odd 
tables, um, each one unique, that could be taken home um, uh, after the life of the the uh, the thing was over. And we still have some in the studio. Yeah. So. Uh, you want me to start it? Yes. Yeah, okay. So pa paper. Um, we've been on a we've been on a, an exploratory uh, uh, adventure with paper for the past probably t eight right. or ten years. Um, we were fascinated by these things. Again, pavilion uh, mania um, got us thinking about kind of how do you make the um, the disposable cup of architecture, not the ceramic cup or the stainless steel cup. And um, so what you're seeing there is a, is a bedpan on the right and a, uh, some kind of packaging on the left, totally disposable, compostable. Um, but super strong, super lightweight. And we, you know, so we'd, we'd been exploring paper, um, Pol making a low cost uh, inflatable yeah. molds. It's um, paper goo, you know, how do you work with that? So we did a studio at UCLA with that on this topic with Peter Evner. Um, we we branched out into lamps. These lamps. What's unique about these is that they are made with a soft form, yeah. uh, a soft mold. So you don't have any. You have much lower costs in terms of mold right. making, and mold is one of a kind. Those are the questions you have to you ask with this material, this process. Is how do you mold it? How do you work with it? So, what does that mean? What is that? How do you riff on that? Going up in scale at the MCA yeah. in um, Santa Barbara. This time, trying to use. Um, real kind of referential imagery imagery in the piece yeah. um, starting to reference sculpture in terms of its scale but um, you know these these are entirely analog uh, they require somebody who's great seems uh, somebody who can really uh, stitch yeah. uh, work with a sewing machine and then uh, it's stuffed with inflatables but these are completely self-supporting um, really thin paper shells. So that's glowing from the inside. That's not like coming from the outside. Yeah. And that led us to kind of our, what we were hoping was ultimately to take this to an architectural scale. Right. We, we, and we saw an opportunity at uh, the Coachella Festival. Um, we'd, we'd worked there before in 2008 we made this project that was yeah. made of mylar. A couple of projects, yeah. That's we did fine. this project called the Elastic Plastic Sponge, which is still one of the favorite things we've done with students, which was a big flexible band that you could manipulate. It's a scale of a building, but you could manipulate it with a crane and give it different shapes. Um, but what we created was this. You want to? Yeah. So start? you know, so paper pulp. It, it's it's a uh, so. And we wanted to make something of, of architectural scale. And prior prior to this, everything that we'd done had been, you know, the size of lamps, pretty large lamps. And we did a, a, an installation, a, a prior installation at SciArc also. So, um, you know, and there, there's, there was there wasn't a whole lot of uh, uh, kind of a, a background in this. So, you know, when you have to when you want to start working with that material, you have to do a lot of testing. So. This image here, there's like we said, there's no data on on how to work with this stuff. So, um, you know, we have to kind of do some destructive testing. What this image is showing here, um, Oops, sorry, and and, uh, and and you know, also had to kind of think about the method of, of production for this thing. So it's 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 a true kind of disposable composite, in a sense that um, so we have this. Uh, you know, we talked about molding. So how do you mold paper pulp? Um, one of the ways is by spraying it on these kind of inflatable bladders. Another way is to kind of create this this network, this this matrix, uh, woven matrix of of yarn that has kind of tension and, and uh, uh, possibility. And we use the the paper pulp as as the kind of uh, uh, the the binder that gave it kind of compressive ability. So in a sense, it's a it's it's a true. Biodegradable composite in which uh, one one thing can't do what it does without the other. So right. the, the pulp itself doesn't have any any ten, tensile strength, but the, but the but the yarn does. So it, it kind of created this uh, pop the next image. Just this kind of a this, this kind of a, a matrix that then we were able to um, to kind of uh, spray paper pulp on and flip it over and kind of create these kind of 
these kinds of uh, structures. And, and, you know, like I was saying, so Coachella is a uh, challenging place. There's 60 mile an hour winds, all of this. But the other thing that is, uh, that had that gave us an advantage or gave an advantage to it was that it's in the desert and you're not really going to be working with paper pulp say in london someplace like that so this it it was kind of the perfect kind of uh uh meet, meeting of, of of all of these kind of disparate uh possibilities and one of them was the location um so in uh, basically the desert so yeah it was yes it was it was it was uh, situationally appropriate, I right. think, and environmentally appropriate. Right. So we were able to do this thing at, at this massive scale because yeah. we could we could we could spray it there. We can work there. It's dry and it's windy <laughs> and it's and it's hot yeah. and it's sunny, and you can you can apply yes. three coats a day. Whereas in London or even in LA in the winter, you'd be you're just not you doing might, it. <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't. It would take three, four days, five days to dry. Yeah. So, so it, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's a, there's a weaving process. Yeah. I mean, we need to get into this spraying, spraying it. So those are guide coats too. We weren't interested in blue and purple. It's right. just just to give you a sense of how. And you end up looking like Papa Smurf. You yeah. know, he was he was our project manager yeah. for this. One of them, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> one of them, yeah. So, but it, you know, and he's all the towers were constructed using. Um, um, manufactured rock and roll truss, so that the only kind of real uh, structural element that was used during the jigging process and the building process is something that can be just rented and then, yeah. you know, given back. Um, had some color, interesting yeah. ideas that it opened up for us about lenticularity in terms of color and spraying on one right. surface and also paper is beautiful in the sense that it's the color is integral to the to the to the material you dye it like you would like when you make like art paper you know so it's it's like the color it's it's color in a different way than than color applied to the surface it's got this kind of depth and richness to it it's beautiful I'm like that so and just the way that you know this thing kind of let light through uh kind of kind of played with um with a, with, a, with a kind of notion of what it was that you were looking at. I don't think people kind of quite understood it. So some yeah, of them, some of them didn't, didn't have yeah. the capacity to because they were like pretty loaded. <laughs> yeah, that woman right like, there. Yep. On so, the left, I think she was, <laughs> she was having a good time. Um, Probably still. I don't care, you know, whatever. I mean, we, we, I mean, we made it for that stuff, so. Okay. Yeah. 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 It was I, 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 I like working in those contexts. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's a great opportunity to, um, to try something new. I mean, you can do really spectacular things aesthetically. You're expected to do spectacular things aesthetically. You get a lot of leeway. There's nobody like from the building department going, well, how's that going to stand up? And, yeah. you know, is that fireproof? You know, nobody asks you those questions too specifically. So it's, it's, op it's an opportunity to do things that, like, are rare, I think, in architecture, uh, because you get like that kind of opportunity. You know, go for it, try it out. It's like yeah, the, the people people are a little bit more willing to kind of take take a risk and have something. You know, maybe not quite work out. I mean, that's it was pretty risky, I think, to kind of do something in paper. I yeah, know. it wasn't it wasn't proven, <laughs> especially I mean, at that scale. We're like, all little, right, what are we crazy? Here? It's a little conceptually heavy for them. Heavy for them. I mean, the, the backstory of that is what really gives it kind of meaning. I mean, it's 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 interesting thing to look at, but like it's a lot more interesting when you know the story behind it. Right. Um, and you know, as you might imagine, not everybody at Coachella is interested in that story. So some are. Um, headlines. Yeah. Uh, so ideas of kind of how, well, life spine, life spine, I mean, this began with this kind of interest in the kind of, in the, in the kind of, in what existed already yeah, there. The, you guys have been so, at Headlands Center for the Arts in Marin County. It's a former um, army barracks. It's now on national park land. Um, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's a, it's an art center that has some great residencies. They've commissioned amazing stuff from, um, uh, yeah, Anne Hamilton and um, others, and so we were thrilled to be 
invited to do something there that was permanently part of the uh, the uh, landscape uh, development around the building. The only catch is that when you're working on a historical building that's under the control of the National Park Service, it has to contribute to the narrative of place, yep. which is what uh, National Park Rangers are in the business of communicating. Right. Um, so it has to tell the story. Some contribute to that. So, you know, that's that's a tough lift when, you know, our work is, there's been a, there's a lot of spectacle in our stuff. There's, it's colorful, it's big, it's bold. So how do you work in this kind of, with those kind of parameters that's going to be scrutinized by the National Park Service? And so we wanted to work with what was there, what was existing, and try to um, find a way to uh, bring it up. We needed There was practical considerations, too, like you needed to make it ADA accessible, the outside. They needed to yeah. be able to drive a fire truck in front of the building. They needed to be non-slip. But we saw some promise in the cracked sidewalk, which was probably built in like 1914, which was an army barracks, um, and preserving that. Preserving it in uh, with the notion of kintsugi in, in mind. The golden dip. joinery, basically, what I think it translates to. But this idea of, of treating something that's broken, not, in, not golden repair, basically. It's you, you elevate something by, by highlighting what went wrong, basically. So, Making that part of its history. Yeah, part of the history. Celebrate, celebrate the scar. So I thought, started thinking about different ways we could do that. Getting thwarted economically. <laughs> they really like this image. They wanted it to glow. It's like, but it doesn't glow. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be retro. We wanted it to be retro-reflective spheres. Like, you know, we wanted it to be gold. Yeah. So we we settled on um, terrazzo, but using terrazzo in a kind of old um, way that wouldn't recede yeah. back into being maybe part of the earth. Taking colors from the from the, uh, the surrounding landscape. And the landscape. Yeah. There were two. There's two buildings that we were dealing with, um, and so we made a welcome terrace for each building, the east building and the west building. Um, so here, are, here we are um, in the process. Um, we had to take the entire uh, cracked uh, array of yeah. concrete apart. Catalog it, uh, store it, cut it. Kind of like archaeologists, you know. You got to kind of approach it like that. Oh God, we got to catalog all these bits, and and it was important that we kept the rela proper relationships. Right, so it fits together like a part. big puzzle. Yeah, but then you have to have enough space between each part to to accommodate the terrazzo. So we had to cut it off and, and features of it. Right, you got to yeah. make you got to make it. You can't make as much detail. We weren't we going to stuff it with gold. That's for sure. <laughs> they didn't have enough money for that. Okay, so we're almost done. All right. That's a little longer than 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, I think kind of getting to uh, uh, the, the, well, I mean, we just, this is a, a, a very recently kind of completed project that I think it, it kind of, uh, and I mean, we are, it's a kind of different structural typology or different just kind of structural idea that we're kind of exploring and, and manufacturing process of, um, of, of uh, kind of using CNC bending of tubing, but it, to create these kinds of things that we're, we call it a, like a caged shell, like a structural cage, basically, in which um, all, of, uh, all of the elements are uh, kind of have the same equal, it's a surface, so they all have the same kind of equal uh, structural uh, capability of carrying the load through yeah, get, the surface. Like the, yeah, like forces run through it like a like yeah. a shell versus like a yeah. like a, a hierarchical but it's, structure. Yeah, but it works as this cage. It works so as it's a cage. Trans, get, it's just transparent. Couldn't of. think of a name for it, the, yeah. the system. But we were we were asked by Abe Landscape Architects yeah. to collaborate with them. This is at Cedar Sinai Medical Center. And so this is like part of this like twenty million dollar renovation of these kind of brutalist uh, and very austere uh, 
uh, pedestal level yeah. that they wanted to turn into a healing garden. Um, and it's we were to make one feature. A pavilion. A yeah. pavilion. So, so um, didn't ask. They were, it, was, it was good in that sense. I mean, usually people don't really want that, you know. So they were like, make a pavilion. So, but yeah, there's the machine. I, you know, I don't show the machine porn, but we were super fascinated by, we hadn't seen a lot of work that had been done using these kinds of things um, where the work was foregrounded. I've seen it in, you know, under the surface in a gear building or Zaha building, but nothing from, um, nothing on where it was exposed. So our challenge was like, how do you, how do you systematize that kind of a, those kinds of parts, these bent tubes, and, and not make it, put it together in such a way that it becomes prohibitively difficult and expensive. So we, maybe this, you know, we did all of your customary analysis, stress analysis on it, but we, what we, this is probably a more important uh, picture because the project only had five details. So you, you've got 375 tubes and 3,000 connections, but all the connections are the same. So the welders really only need to do one weld really well. Um, and there's not as much kind of potential for liability in that situation because yeah. it's one, one way to do it. But required a lot it's also, of pro prototype. It's also, it's also, I mean, the, the, the way in which it, it's, it, it simplifies the way you have to communicate information. There's, this is this joint, that's that joint, that's that other joint. So you know the procedures that you got to employ. So a lot of that also involved like testing, mock-ups. We didn't, we didn't actually construct this project. No. So, you know, we, we, we know enough when to know that we, I mean, we're not welders. We, to, to, have, to have taken this on, it was far beyond our, our capability, our, our, our range of equipment, all of these things. So we didn't have any of these things, especially the skill to weld like this. Which is, which is unusual for us because we were, us we're used to being in this kind of feedback process where yeah. we, can, we can turn on a dime our oftentimes our production right. to accommodate some new finding in from our engineer some new budgetary constraint yeah. and we can we can because we're the designers and the and the makers we can kind of get those two parts of our mind working together and come up with a solution but in this case we we really had to um, predict what the builder could probably pull off uh, without having the option to going through extensive prototyping, although we did, these are two several prototypes. prototypes. Yeah. This is one prototype, and it's the most difficult piece in the whole project. And you can see, like, it looks like it was done at a hack muffler shop because, like, he had to, he wasn't able to make all those bends. They hacked it, yeah. They hacked it. <laughs> um, the piece ultimately, the project was ultimately made in panels uh, that were then fitted together because it had to be. You want me to keep going? Yeah, yeah, go for it. It had to be, it had to be transported as a single piece, uh, all of the, which uh, meant that, it, and, and, and dropped into, onto site on, uh, with a crane, which meant um, posed real problems or challenges in terms of how we would coat it and finish it. Um, it that eliminates the possibility for galvanizing because you can't get, first of all, nobody has a galvanizing bath the size of this thing. And second of all, the, the, the number of welds and the amount of tension in the surface would, would, Warping, would yeah. warp if you put it into boiling hot zinc. So um, we, while it was built as panels, the panels were not pre-galvanized. That was yeah. more, the panels, panelization was more in the service of being able to, right. uh, uh, for workability, and, and, and jigability, yeah. if that's a word. I mean, just to be able to, to access all of those things. So they, I mean, that's what he's working on a section right there. So, and um, we 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 had to opt for the the, the next best coding, uh, supposedly. We became experts on coatings, I yeah. think, with this project Which for, is, for several reasons. One of them was that right there, that guy spraying that stuff. Ther thermal spraying, yeah. thermal spray. So, which is essentially atomizing uh, aluminum and um, ceramic, and we didn't want to just paint it. Right. But. So it attaches to the surface and bonds with the mild steel, and um, becomes a sacrificial coating 
it, it, it's like galvanizing it, like galvanizing and it you'll see it on like bridges you'll see it on uh, tarmacs you'll, uh, in, on aircraft carriers yeah. and uh, uh, anyway ours, ours didn't work they, they, anyway <laughs> it didn't work it didn't work quite as advertised yeah <laughs> caused some problems so, so it ended up it, it, they, they uh, we, we it, the thing had to be overcoated with uh, tenemic paint and live and learn um there it is going in. Yeah, right there. I wish, wish I could have like pull, pulled it off right there. Yeah, there was a teeny, that teeny, teeny McPaint overcoating. Uh, we, uh, we could have avoided all, all of this. And, you know, I mean, this, what, what, did, what did we learn with this? I mean, <laughs> don't trust anybody. Yeah. Um, I tell our staff, it's like, I don't trust anybody. I mean, I don't even trust my lawyer. Inspection yeah. reports. I mean, yeah. like, like, like a paperwork of, uh, uh, Quality, basically, of quality yeah. control. I mean, we learned quite a lot in that project, and we put it up there because, I mean, I think that like a lot of times the things that really, really kick your butt. If you let them kick your butt, then they kicked your butt. But if you take something forward out of that, then I think you know, you can you can you can look on the bright side of it. <laughs> that one you kind of have to. In the end, you know, we're, I think that that all of those things, the, the project ended up being. I mean, amazing, and and uh, I mean, I think the pictures kind of speak for themselves. There's not uh, a thing that that um, kind of uh, makes it look without not, not like we we intended, or it doesn't uh, perform the way we we intended. So in in the end, I mean, I think very very happy with it, and so is the client. So yeah, goes from being this surface to disappearing. I mean, people think of it as a big. Um, thumbprint. That's one of the things it's referred to. The big thumbprint. It's got a built-in. Uh, it's got a built-in bench. But it's a it's a space that um, I think it. There's enough happening in it that it it, it kind of actively it can really engage your your imagination. It's unfamiliar enough that it can. You know, I think it. It's 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 a the right kind of structure for that uh, environment. Um, it's a place to really uh, rest your mind for just a few minutes in the presence of uh, some very difficult things that people are probably experiencing inside that building. Yeah. Um, but I also think it, you know, from in terms of our career and our practice, it represents a kind of next stage for us because it's moving beyond working entirely on our own yep. building um, and uh, learning how we can push uh, a process uh, without owning uh, the process, uh, owning the tools of production. Um, uh, you know, like getting this project built meant um, really quoting it with half a dozen steel fabricators yeah. and coming up with a thinking a great deal about what it how we would qu do quality control on this and then really putting the builders to the test and seeing if they actually came up with the same scheme and I mean, the ones we got we we went to more than a dozen different people that have a, a insane ability to bend tubing and we got quotes that went from I don't know, three hundred thousand to a million dollars, and you know, so you're like, well, somebody here is way over budget. And yeah. Somebody here is definitely like. Well, way a million over. wasn't over, but yeah. the, but but three hundred thousand is like, you know, you're they're setting it up, themselves up for yeah. failure. So, so you got to like, you know, in, in special, we're not, we're not, when, you know, and we are not experts at this uh, welding and all that stuff. So you have to, you have to, you have to work hard to. You know, look at what's in front of you and know how to make a, a decision accordingly. You know, so we've, we've done this enough to have a very. Uh, I think, and especially with these kinds of things, you you have to have um, an idea of how you're going to do it. Because if you go up to a builder or these kinds of guys and like without any notion of how you might do something like that, then you know, probably it's not going to go exactly the way your way. But you know, we've done this enough to to. Go there and say, you know, we, we think it should be done like this, and we could have a an informed conversation with them. And and the guys that we went with in, in the end, uh, we went with them because they 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 saw it the same way that we saw it. They kind of talked about 
doing it the same way that we kind of talked about doing it. So they're the ones that made us the, the most the most comfortable. They also weren't the, the, the least the cheapest, you know. And uh, um, so so it, it was it, in a, in a sense, you know, that's that's where the back and forth I think is in, in this project. We while we don't have the tools of production, we have this pretty good we have this great relationship with these guys. We, I mean, we also have the scheme. I mean we, we right. I mean, we, the thing was conceived with a in, with a with a theoretical production scheme in mind that was that was um, um, I mean what's the word uh, credible enough that we were able to get it done absolutely and we wouldn't have probably done we wouldn't have been able to do this if we hadn't had done the kind of work that we'd done in the past so we, we right. were able to kind of speak their language and make it happen I think we should let them ask us some questions right. yeah there we go <laughs> that's it any questions I get, hang on a sec. I, I give you give you guys this. Somebody said, "Pass it on." Just wondering, wondering about the border wall. If you, any, if you have any ideas about the border wall? Yeah, I, I've got a lot of ideas about the border wall, but they're not um, architectural. Oh. <laughs> I'm not even a U.S. citizen, so uh, so I have a lot of ideas about that too. So yeah, you do. Any other? So. You didn't talk much about like. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a parameter like that we try to work with. I mean, I, I like we like those challenges. We, I mean, because I suppose because we our first project was a project that had a deadline and had a budget in it. Um, timing was key to tailoring the design, um, making certain design choices. And, um, and I don't think the, the Coachella project was any different, but um, the logistics and timing worked just worked out just right, pretty much, in that we were commissioned to do it in the fall, and then we, we were able to do enough prototyping and testing in the fall, and then, <clears throat> and then produce the the um, rigid boundaries that hold the tensile um, matrix of, 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 of rope um, in the shop, you know, kind of produce those with our equipment. And then that's modular, so we could ship it out to Coachella. And then they were out there for a month and two months, you know, putting it together and, and blowing uh, paper on it. It's, but it, it always, and it's always, oh, it's always on our mind too, too much. But, and a lot of times people don't give us like enough we, time. Yeah, we. I mean, that's what we have to fight a lot. It's like we need to say, like people, oh, can you have it done by next week? It's like, for the for the printing machine. Yeah. For the printing machine. <laughs> for the printing machine. Um, so, like, one of you has a. Uh, Kind of like a background with like aerospace design, I guess, or like your dad did. did. And so I mean, you not, not building machines and stuff like that. I mean, you weren't building machines, so you, that's more like. Oh uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I don't even know how to work on a computer, <laughs> so or or any of that stuff. So, um, I, you know, I think that what what we like uh, know how to do is kind of think think about how to set up the the process, okay. and, and 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 you know that machine is like okay, so the string has to go from. Here it's in a spool, so I have to run it through these things, and you just think the think of the process. Okay, I got to paint it. How can I paint it? And and we just started to you know break, to it, down. break it down break into it down. yeah. So I got to paint it. I'm gonna spray. I'm gonna spray paint with it. Well, how can I spray paint on it? Right. An airbrush. Okay, then I got to like cut it. So how can I cut it? I'm just gonna use right. scissors. So I'll just have a pair of scissors that actuate it. So it's it's like literally like like taking the hand processes and automating. One of those things, That's so awesome. with solenoids and things like that, and and we also work with you know we, we work with a guy that 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 um, that that knows how to code and you know oh, make sure. things and, and do all of that stuff. So you know we, we work with people like that. I, I, I my first job was at Frank Gehry's, and everybody that worked there did like kind of Katia work and stuff, and they were all from aerospace. 
and nobody else knew how to work with those things. So you'd sit and you'd sit next to them and you'd just talk to them about what you wanted to do because I we didn't know how to operate it. So mm -hmm. just you just talk about it. So and then second question for the UCLA wall, like you can choose anything to, to kind of like be dismantled and like reused, right? But why tables? No, you, you can't choose anything. I mean, it 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 it's 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 a it wasn't it wasn't an a, a priori choice. I mean, mm -hmm. it was about having a hunch about a a component that might have some some value after the 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 the, the project was over. I mean, we didn't use you know we didn't use um, um, Hummel figurines. You know, what she's what UCLA students going to be interested in Hummel figurines? I mean, well, some maybe, but we thought a table is something that we can produce. A table is something that's universal enough. Uh, 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 a table or stool mm -hmm. it could also be a stool. Right. Um, it's cheap enough to produce. I mean, this is. I mean, in the end, by the way, that's a that project is a kind of a sketch. It's not. You know. It wasn't commissioned by Nike. It was commissioned by the UCLA, you know, grant program. So it's got like a twenty thousand dollar budget, but um, and it, what? But then also the t the table is it, it? Does it have as an object enough? Um, can it be used as a structure in enough ways that enable it to have this dual purpose? And because it's a, you know, it's a it's a surface material. It's a flat plane. You can run tension through that. So the whole thing is like a, it's the Paco Rabanne dress of 1963, the, the kind of little, the little, um, uh, what, did they, what did he call that? I can't remember, but it's, it's like chain mail. Um, so, you know, we, it was a really hard challenge. And we, we did a whole studio at UCLA with students and nobody could come up with anything to do in that courtyard. They couldn't think of uh, the right, Combination of object and structure. It operates like a cloth. Yeah. So, um, right. you know, all of those things, like the idea with that, like, like the, you know, so we were theorizing that because the tables and legs stick out and the structure of the table is going to be something that we can use in our classroom. So, you know, we did a lot of reasons why tables. Some, some of those were some of the things also, well, people want to take these things. You know, but, you got to get rid of them. Yeah, <laughs> right. Students students always want stuff, but you know, in the end, it was more of a it was more meant to be like a kind of a more of a critique too. I mean, it wasn't like do we think that people are going to start building buildings, uh, you know, out of reusable components like that? No, I mean, yeah. yes. I don't know if anyone could hear the first part of that. Um, but my question for you is how did you guys find a path that isn't just building houses in architecture? It, it found us kind of. I mean, really, for the most part, it did. It, I mean, that, the, the gold project that we showed you, uh, we showed you guys was kind of like I ran into him at a bar, you know, and we started talking about it. And, he was he was doing this 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 uh, this, this thing for this in this gallery, and you know it, it was just an opportunity, and and I, I, I mean it was just what was out there at the time. You, you were working for Prime. Yeah, so. And I was working for Microsoft. Yeah. So. I so you you were you were never like really like you said earlier you never really. Go for it. <laughs> you you were you were never totally um, 
enmeshed, immersed in the in the kind of well. You never saw your path as being like a, uh, a project manager at Gary's or a project um, uh, uh, designer or something at Gary's, right? I mean, you were a mass, master prototyper, uh, you know, thinking with his hands yeah, guy. Right? Let, 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 let you uh, let you go, let me go with that. But right. you know, uh, I mean, yeah. always know that. Um, I do want to make. I, I mean, I, in, in the thing that I think is is, is kind of is nice about partnerships and all of that stuff is that you can think of you, you think of yourself as not. It's it's the dual dual people. I mean, it's two people is being two different things. So um, you know, I mean, I, it's it's kind of a, it's part of what I've always been interested in, like making like making things, but uh, in kind of more an industrial way, you know, I love going to factories and just watching that kind of stuff. But, um... You don't really feel like it appears to so, a the niche there, that they don't... That, that, that architecture schools don't really always... Maybe they, they, becoming customarily supported, you know, like thinking entirely of their hands. I, I think Sire, at the time that we were there, it definitely was definitely did that. I mean, I, I always felt like that Sire was definitely a place for kind of Thinking about ideas and, and making them, uh, at when when we were there at that at that time, I I, I, you know, I haven't been there in, in much lately, so I, I know it feels different nowadays. But um, um, yeah, I mean, I think that that was kind of part of part of what was going on in school then, and but also this kind of like um, kind of approaching things in kind of conceptual ways, and 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 and, and, I, and where I think it's kind of. For us, it's interesting. Is how we're trying to blend those those two those two kinds of kinds of ideas, you know, kind of approaching. And that's what we called it. What we called it, approaching things from 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 the way of like the way the two people think, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I don't I don't really I'm not naturally inclined as a um, as like a hands on person um, like he is. But um, I am I was just uncomfortable. Always uncomfortable in architecture, a bit, um, with some aspects of it. Um, I always felt like I had like a shackle around my legs, and so when I I started working in film as a art director, and that was felt fulfilling for a while and interesting, and the pace, the rapidity of it, and the and the and the and the dialogue with directors, and the introduction of narrative and light and cinematography and that was all really appealing to me. My mother had been in theater when I was a kid. I'd been around a lot of set building. And so, like, some of the earliest carpenters that I saw were people building sets. And it really, the idea of building a set that was kind of in public space was really appealing to me. Well, and so I think you, it... You, you, like, in, working in Hollywood back then gave, you, gave people, like, a lot of opportunity to... So it, like to kind of apply what you learned in architecture school in this really fast way that isn't like building a house, you know, that you got to go, oh, I got to, the guy rejected my drawings and I got to go back and get some red lines. So it's a, it's a total different way of working. It's about working to, towards the image to what you're looking at. So, I mean, that's part of yeah. it. Yeah, but at the same time, it, it's just all the reasons, oh, yeah. for, for all the reasons that I loved, like liked Hollywood and like working there, I kind of, that also drove me away from it because I got tired of it. I, I got tired of throwing things away. I got tired of, um, I wanted to, I, I wanted to go and work for an architect for several years and actually, you know, build things that would last. And so, you know, I think of what we do now as a kind of hybrid of those two proclivities. Uh, back there. Say something. Uh, yeah. You. I've known you guys for a long time and one thing that has struck me over the years has been your psychological fortitude. <laughs> like the ability to hold these really delicate and unusual ideas in your head and be able to present them and have other people buy into this dream and then actually hunt them down and like continue to chase each detail through the process like in a super obsessive way, I mean a lot of the time, and, and to do that. And where, uh, where do you guys find your kind of reserve of uh, fortitude, I guess, 
I don't know yet where we find that. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, we're just stupid enough that we agree to do projects like that. I mean, in the beginning, I, I don't know. I, I Lately, we were evaluating we're, that because we do run into problems and they're painful. Like, we're, you know, we have to. San we Diego's have, a really hard, painful. It's a really very painful project. You, you've been over there. These you've guys seen that. over here, they're looking at me right now. You know? Yeah, these guys they're are like, they're like covered in glue all day long, usually. So. You know, we didn't. Yeah. We've never done large scale composites, so, and we it, whether we took that on, and then we took on one that like Bill Chrysler was like, I've never seen this before, but I, I think it'll work. It's you know, just kind of. But, came but, out but I can't tell you exactly how to do it. You guys are just gonna have to figure it out. I mean, it's that problem solving that we like, but you know, you sometimes we sometimes we 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 like that. overestimate, yeah. underestimate. It's it's and you, but you, you've got to get through it, or else it's going to destroy you. I mean, it's it, I mean, it will literally financially destroy you. So I mean, that, that's not that's not bullshit. It will, and um, you know, you, you have to be ready to to. Be, I mean, we have to be thinking about how to handle those situations. Yeah. We have to have enough work that we can rob Peter to pay Paul, and you know, on on other projects and. It's it's a whole like keeping the whole boat afloat is 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 tough. In the mental yes, the mental fortitude like it sometimes it's I, I don't know if it's fortitude. I, it's, it's like I said, it's stupidity. But we're 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 there are times where the the amount of stress that that it causes is really. I mean, these guys know who work for us. Like it's just awful. It's like a, <laughs> sometimes it, they everybody's get, get gets pulled into it. Um, how do you think about labor, especially between? Labor? I mean, some things aren't. I mean, so some some of some of some of the way that we think about that is by building on so so projects that are done more as uh, iterations, like the like the bead chain projects and and things like that. So. I mean that's one way to to kind of conceptualize labor and how to think about it. And another way, and other ways to think about it is like the like the San Diego project that that like that you know not all the steps have been figured out. So I mean labor in in, in, in doing for that is is you have to think about it completely different. So you have to you have to you have to you have to, you have to think about it with a from the a pessimistic kind of point of view. Like oh like I'm going to fail more than succeed so you have to overestimate and it's hard to, it's hard to know how much to overestimate because you know you don't want to so overestimate something that then you know it starts to impact like what you want in or what you want to get to in a in a kind of detrimental way right like you could be your own worst enemy I guess you're over, if you're over kind of think about time maybe but, but we, we were also you know we, we we've been Good in the past at developing projects with an eye toward, um, you know, the word, in many cases, the word is labor. And somebody took me to task on a, at a talk that I was giving one time, and they're like, well, it doesn't look like craftsmanship to me. That looks like labor. And I was like, you know, to, to some degree, you're, you're right in that we, not right now, though, what these guys are doing, because it's, it's a lot more artisanal. Which makes it more scary because there's more opportunity to mess it up, and the quality control becomes much more challenging. There's more steps. There's more, you know, more operations. There's more nuance and decision making on the on the person who's handling the material. Whereas something like Maximilian Schell, it was you know if you you, you go to the, the guy who's going to CNC cut the pieces, you 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 he CNC cuts the pieces, and the labor is like picking them up and checking to make sure that they were all, you know, every piece is numbered properly and is you know on the list, and then assembling it according to a kind of mathematical rigor. There there isn't a lot of what I would call craftsmanship of risk involved in the assembly process and a lot of our projects have been have taken that risk out 
on the part of the individual hands until lately where it's a lot more more well, of that and it 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 it's you just got to know it better you know you got to know you got to know the steps and we can com compartmentalize labor too you can take like so the thinking out of out of it and just like do all the thinking ahead of, ahead and then basically then do all of the execution later so yeah. it's it's yeah. it's you can you can approach labor so many ways like that right I, um, like the, depending on how you you can dice it up right S yeah sift it you know yeah like, I mean, oh, I'm a, like front loading all of like the thinking all the thinking yeah by like going okay I'm gonna organize it like this and you just think about it beforehand and then so it's still part of the part of the labor but it's just not done okay I mean, you don't organize it every time that you're doing it. I mean that's sort of the dream of digital fabrication right is that you can you can remove personal craftsmanship out of you can shift it away from the hand and put it in the computer operator right in the, in, in the person who's operating the the CNC tool who's making a bunch of components and the person who puts them together is like snapping together a um, you know a, a, a you know assembling a toy basically it's that this piece fits here and that piece fits there and that piece fits there and that piece fits there and it's not in theory there's not a lot of craft or skill that's necessarily involved in that but there is, <laughs> there is as we know but um, I think that we've like you said we, we've tried to in many cases we try to front load as much thinking and as much as much thinking as possible and and, and so it, it is turning craftsmanship to labor except like not what we're doing right now <laughs> I, I, I just yeah I mean I, I I guess like you know I'm just kind of going on what you, you said that you're like what the guy took you to task on the difference between the word and stuff I just don't see that much of a difference between the two of them because it's just one of them it's just different efficiencies right know? right uh, in different paces I, pre I prefer I to take make craftsmanship a bunch of different labor steps so just much much better anyway any other yes anybody else okay. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thanks. The cocktail part. The cocktail part. Yeah. All right.